Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMolder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody who is wondering if opening the door to an ex is a good thing. But before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. No, we are not professionals. We are not trained in any of this. So please take our advice as you see fit. We're only here to offer our humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding and maybe some laughs about the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience, which is love. I also have to quickly apologize for Monday's episode this week in which I drank (laughs) my first cup of coffee in like four weeks. Oh, shit. (laughs) That's what was going on. Sam's like, oh, oh, that's why you were <coughs> off uh-huh. the rails. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Let's make sense. Very good. All right. Let's continue that trend as I take another swig of this cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's do it. So this letter comes from moving forward, but allowing myself to glance back, whose pronouns are he, him, who is writing from a series of wild events. Hi, Sam and Sierra. I've been trying to write you for the last three or four months about my love life how I've been healing from it and some possible bumps that I was thinking of introducing. I'm writing to you now because that bump hit and I am trying to remain calm and collected. A year ago, my partner and I split and it devastated me. To put it into context, we had been together for about a year and a half, come off of a high of weddings and summer fun and just moved in together. Life has a funny way of throwing stuff off the rails and something tragic regarding family, identity, and childhood hit us like nothing else could. The emotional togetherness was rocked. We both tried our best to be there for each other, but it became obvious that time apart was needed to find herself and she called it off. I lived in our new apartment decorations, unpacked boxes, and hopes and dreams for six months before I was able to get out of the lease. Fast forward, I have done weekly sessions of therapy, take medication for my diagnosed depression and anxiety, and really reestablished myself in my community. I am confident and have been making more friends in my area, and my friends from university moved out here as well. Speaking with my therapist, I've come a long way, and I also see it. The plan is to move to monthly sessions and eventually wean the dosage of my meds. On that great feeling and outlook, I decided I had the distance and emotional strength to reach out to my ex to catch up. I knew the anniversary of the tragic events were coming up and I wanted to offer an ear and some familiarity for her if she wanted. We hadn't spoken in eight months. We hadn't seen each other either. I rid myself of social media and was truly taking a chance. I didn't even know if they still lived in the area or if they'd want to talk. I was ready for a no reply or being turned down. I wasn't though. And we met and caught up and had some coffee and chatted for a few hours in the park. We did it a second time out of the blue as well, walked through the park and sat on her porch and it felt good. I had cleared the hurdles, the distance was deliberate, and I felt good with the situation. And from what I was able to read, she was feeling good as well. And we were encouraging of each other. Then we talked after one meeting and we came over to each other's places to talk again. The things escalated and we shared a moment, we're vulnerable. We brought up things we still kept from We brought up things we still kept of the other and things that reminded us of each other. Before sharing a kiss and a moment, she brought up wanting to kiss again and wanted to be sure it wouldn't set me back or undo any of the work that I had done. I asked her the same and we let it happen. In the most cliche of ways, it was beautiful. We both felt so natural and sat in that moment for hours. That's not what I'm writing about. I feel confident and I was able to stay balanced then. The next day, when I was across the country, see, she messages me that she just got out of an accident, her new car is totaled, and she was scared. I'm grateful she was comfortable to tell me and I checked in and was just glad she was okay and that she was able to get out relatively unscathed. I'm worried though, I'm fighting urges to be there again, to help and be the boyfriend that tried to fix it all. I don't want us to assume roles or to scare her away by showing I care and wanting to help. I'm in my head a little and I'm not sure how to address it. I know that we have our distance. We are both capable and have lived our lives thus far, but I wish I could be there for them. At the beginning of the healing, like most people, I thought about the cliche of finding each other again. I'm not currently fighting for or against getting back together, but I'm not giving into that fantasy storyline at the moment. I'm letting life move forward and making sure I'm leveled, but life's got a way of feeling like a test. 
Maybe I don't need an answer. I might just want to vent to breathe to admit I miss them, that I deeply enjoyed our moment, that a ton of coincidences have hit me in the heart, that I still care about them, was scared that they were hurt, and appreciate us being able to be in each other's lives. Thank you both. You two have been truly part of my rebuilding for the last year, and I think it's beautiful how much you are able to hear your listeners out and help them, even if it's tough to hear. All right, my darling, thank you so much for writing and for trusting us with this letter and for listening. Um, We're so truly, truly, this is so genuine. We're so deeply honored to be a part of your healing journey. I love when people, um, when our listeners share something like that, um, because it, because we're proud of you. I feel, I feel genuinely proud um, of the work that you're doing, all of the introspection and the thoughtfulness that you shared in this letter um, make me incredibly grateful to be part of your story in any small way. So, like I said, thank you for trusting us with this letter. Um, it's, it seems like you are in kind of a, a vulnerable place, but a very exciting and fruitful place. I love that you shared that like you're not banking on getting getting together or not getting together. You're just sort of like in this liminal space where there is a potential path to um, reconnection, but you don't want to repeat the same patterns. You don't want to carry over old habits into this new iteration, whether or not you're with this person, right? That's what I really love about this is that you're really taking the time to reflect about the dynamics that unfolded in your relationship in and out of your control. Um, So we're going to talk about things that we would maybe consider at this very um, interesting intersection of your life, (laughs) things, strategies that we might employ, um, whether or not we think you should shoot your shot for another, for a round two or, you know, whatnot. Um, But most importantly, how you can continue this path of healing and introspection and self-growth while maintaining your sense of self and your sense of self-love. But first, we're going to take a very quick break. All right, everyone. Welcome back. Um, Yeah, my friend, I am so proud of you for how you are handling the situation, all of the growth that you've done over the course of the last year. You know, I think... I think what I love about your letter is that sometimes we get letters from folks who are like doing the work and are like, is this right? (laughs) And I just like, I want a name for you that the way that you are experiencing this, I think for me is how the work happens, right? You know, you're, you're in this situation where you're noticing a pattern coming up, right? Like you're noticing this impulse that you want to, go back home and you want to take care of everything and make sure that they're safe and do all of the things, fix the problem, right? And that that was the role that you had when you two were together previously and was kind of like the thing that maybe made the relationship unsustainable for both of you, right? Sounds like there were maybe other dynamics there, but for you, that was the thing that you noticed was causing you the most harm. And the fact that you're noticing that pattern, you're like sitting and experiencing the emotions that come with that pattern, right? Like that first impulse to just like drop everything and go fix the problem. And instead pausing and saying, do I want to do this, right? Is this the the thing that's going to be helpful for me? How do I, knowing what I know, knowing what I've learned, knowing what I've processed through, knowing my emotional state, knowing everything that I've been working on over the course of the last year, is this how I want to respond or do I want to choose to do something different or do I want to choose to just pause and wait and see what happens next? Like that is the thing that, that we're supposed to be doing. Like that's mindfulness right. there. Right. That's right? It, like right there. Mm-hmm. Mindfulness is not having every answer all the time. Mindfulness is coming back to what is happening in the present, right? Coming back into our understanding of ourselves and saying, okay, this is happening. Here's what I know. Here's what I anticipate, but I can only make decisions about what's happening in this moment. So what do I want to do? How do I come back to this particular thing? And it's uncomfortable a lot of the time because there's not an answer. Like, I don't know. I don't know if you should go and try and fix everything. I don't know if you should be with this person, right? Like there's so many unknowns here. And, and the thing about moving through a healing journey is that we don't actually get 
answers. Like nothing becomes necessarily like, yes, this is exactly what I need to do all the time and I know exactly it. It's actually just about accepting the fact that we don't know what we're supposed to do in any given moment and trusting ourselves to say, and I can, I know that I can do things. I know that I have tools and I know that if I mess up, I can figure out how to move through that as well, right? Like that's, that's the actual work and it's uncomfortable a lot of the time for sure. Cause we don't know, but that discomfort isn't telling you you're doing it wrong. That discomfort is telling you that like you're uncomfortable, which is not great. Like it's yeah. not a fun yeah, thing yeah, to feel. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like I'm not trying to say like, Ooh, isn't it great that you're uncomfortable? Sort of it is. Cause like discomfort is a place where we can grow and learn and right. It doesn't mean that like you should be doing something different. It doesn't mean that like the alarm bells should be going off. It just means that you're, this is uncomfortable. You painted a picture that I really appreciate because oftentimes when we, when we talk about mindfulness, when we see mindful content online, it's about like being um, intentional and slow and connected to yourself. But oftentimes when I've been in my most mindful self, I don't have an immediate answer. Oftentimes when I'm in my most connected, mindful manifestation of Sierra, I am not as smooth as I normally am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because sure. when I'm disconnected, when I'm doing, when I'm enacting those similar, those familiar patterns of codependency, I know exactly what to say. I know exactly what I will do. Of course, I'll go over to your house in the middle of the night and take care of you. <laughs> of course, I'll, ex- sure. of course, I'll, um, revoke my own boundaries and overextend myself. I know how to do that. That's easy that I look capable when I am being codependent, but when I'm being mindful, when I'm living in my own boundaries and my values, I stutter, I stumble, I hesitate. I don't immediately know what the right answer is. And so I love that you painted this picture of mindfulness as uncomfortable, as awkward as this transition period. And of course, mindfulness, you can mature into mindfulness in terms of um, this next iteration of whoever you are meant to be will become easier with time and practice, of course. But in the beginning, growth is uncomfortable. Growth will make it feel like you're stumbling through this, trying to figure out where the light switch is in the dark room, you know. And I just want to say, I want to reiterate that and say that it's okay if you're taking your time in this next season of life and connection to make sure that you're moving with intention. Um, It's okay that it might move a little bit differently. You might not feel as smooth or confident as you did in the past. That means you're doing something different, not that you're doing something wrong. Now, not to be the bleeding heart of this show, but I didn't read anything in here (laughs) that tells me you couldn't have a future with this person that there couldn't be a round two. I'm also like a queen of the round two. I'm married to (laughs) an ex, you know, Um, it's true. And I also think, you know, this wasn't the, the traumatic events that happened over the summer that you were living together were out of your control. Um, and of course, when we're going through trauma, when, when we're trying to make it through the, the ground zero of that traumatic event, you're in survival mode, which guarantees you're, you're going back to old coping mechanisms, you know, patterns that you inherited from your childhood that might not be the most finessed or mindful thing, you know? Um, what about you, Sam? Like you're a little bit more fastidious when it comes to yeah. round two I bring in the, a great way, in an intelligent way. <laughs> energy. So yeah. that's what is happening. Here. And I'm just uh, drooling over here. Like <laughs> throw me the ball again. <laughs> um, <clears throat> no, I agree with you. I think that the, that this is a, there's a lot of possibility here for things to go well, especially given the amount of work that you, our letter writer, have done to, again, notice those patterns in you and and offer yourself different ways of behaving and thinking and processing. And, and I think it'll depend also on what your potential partner has been doing over the course of the last year as well. But it sounds like you've both been through the ringer over the course of the last year, and that had a huge impact on your relationship and and the thing is, is that healing time heals, right? It doesn't heal linearly and it doesn't heal perfectly, but 
but you have had some distance from the things that have happened to you that now there's an opportunity for you to be in a different place around those things and to be in that different place together. I wouldn't encourage you as you're thinking about what it looks like for you to be with this person. And again, this is your decision. You, you get to decide how you want to move forward. But I think that talking about both what happened and some of the processes that you all have been doing to help you heal from what happened is going to be really important. I think it's going to be important for you to not just be like, cool, that's over. Now we're in, we have a blank slate, right? I think that there's going to have to be some grappling with how things ended, what happened, and also how you're going to recommit to doing things in ways that are going to be sustainable for the relationship. And and I have a lot of faith that you're going to be able to do that, given the way that you wrote this letter, given the way that you're processing through this particular crunchy moment for yourself. And I, I think the the way that this relationship will move forward is if you can share some of that with your partner about what your new boundaries are going to be about note saying, I need to challenge myself to not try and fix everything and invite her into helping you do that. Right. Like, I think that there's a lot of potential here. If you both can be vulnerable about what happened, how it went down, and also how you two are going to work together to make this iteration of your relationship more sustainable for you. And I also want to stress, even though I am that bleeding heart who like sees a past, a path to reconnection here, a path that has already been, you know, started upon, you know, um, I want to also say um, reconnection here in the form of um, a relationship in the form of couplehood isn't the only quote path to success. You know, you two could never talk again. And I would say that this was a really successful relationship that you both grew and healed from, right? The, the path of rectification is not only reuni reunification, right? And even if all of this work that you've done doesn't result in you two getting back together so that you can quote, right your wrongs. You know, I think that's the way we, that's how I have failed in the past when I have looked back on relationships. I've seen them as like, let me get a chance to do that over again not recognizing that they weren't meant to be rectified in the first place. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So, I think that's such an important point. Right. So it, this is still a really beautiful letter, a really important path to Sam and I, whether or not you two get back together, you know, you have done like breakups suck and trauma sucks harder and you two experience both together. Um, I am really proud. I'm not, I don't want to diminish all the pain that led you here by like over beautification, beautifying it, you know, but you have, you both are on a really beautiful path right now. You know what I mean? It might be painful. It might be hard to look at. Sometimes your footing might be unsure or uncertain, but um, you're doing all the right things and whether or not you two tr decide to do this again, isn't the marker to Sam and I for of, of growth and of quote unquote success, you know? Absolutely. The success is your own healing journey yes. and not whether or not you two can come back together. Right? Yes. And, and it's important to remember that for sure. Yeah. Okay. My darling, I know um, we mostly just like gave you a virtual high five, <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully you gleaned some sort of advice or solace or direction or perspective from this, um, to carry with you, um, in this, in this next chapter, whatever it, sh it may entail. Um, Sam and I are proud of you. Um, we want you to move forward with intention and thoughtfulness. It's okay. If you don't always have the answers, it's okay. If you fumble, um, we're really proud of you and we're really excited to see what comes next. We love you. Thank you so much for writing. We hope this helps. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like more content from us, or if you would like access to our monthly office hours, you can support us on Patreon. Our, our office hours are when we hop on Zoom with anyone who wants to join us. Uh, we just had a great office hours recently. It was so much fun. Um, people answered, uh, or people asked really interesting questions and just like, offered so much love and support in the chat. It's so much fun. Our next office hours are going to be on uh, Sunday, October 27th at 
3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. So uh, if you'd like access to that, you can hop on Patreon. It's $5 a month uh, and you get access to that as well as our back catalog of all of our previous Patreon episodes. So check that out. Patreon.com slash Just Break Up Pod. You can also slide into our DMs, send us your favorite relationship memes, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at JustBreakUpPod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his podcast and his music. And remember, mindfulness, moving with intention, breaking old patterns, it's not going to feel smooth at first. It's not going to feel intuitive when you enact change on patterns that you have inherited since childhood, right? Growth isn't comfortable. Growth isn't easy. In fact, it feels uncomfortable for a reason because you're doing something differently. And that's okay. And if all else fails, just break up. <laughs>